who, you've, you've just written about the death of Sir David Amos, uh, who, who I think you were, you, were, you were with him just, just a few days ago. Yeah, I saw him, uh, it, must have been just, it must have been almost like two weeks ago now, it was at, it was at Tory Party Conference on a houseboat, actually, on the Manchester Ship Canal. Um, and he was in, you know, typically sort of, uh, typically uh, upbeat form. Um, and obviously, it's you know for all of us, it's just such an, a, a you know a terrible tragedy. Obviously, primarily a terrible tragedy for his for his family and his close friends. But the, the, the one thing, and, and you know better than, than certainly I, but you would suspect that he would be the last person to say that let's put up more barriers, make it harder for MPs to meet the public, because because that was his raison d'être. That's he he loved meeting the public and trying to help. No, I think that's right, and I think a lot of MPs will, will, will take that view. But I also think we just have to be honest now. I mean, this is the second time in the space of, uh, of five years that one of our MPs have been killed. There have been other attacks. Um, I, you know, I completely understand the, the, the view of, of Liam, who is saying he regards that as part of his job. I mean, we also have to remember when we're talking about MPs, when MPs are in their constituency surgeries... They're not actually often alone. They're usually there with staff members as well. So it's not just the security of staff members. And, uh, I, I mean, when I, you know, when I finished here, I'm going to go over to the House of Commons to, 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 to watch the tributes. Whilst I'm there, myself and the MPs present will be protected by very, very heavy security. But obviously, once they leave the immediate sort of House of Commons precinct, then they have no security at all. And I think, I think there's, there's a disconnect there that sadly we're going to have to start to look at. How? How do you look at that? Do you have MPs well, with protection all the time? I, I think it's probably unlikely to have protection all the time, but I certainly think when you've got a situation where MPs are attending, attending sort of scheduled surgeries, obviously, as we've, as we've tragically seen, a, a, an appointment system doesn't appear to give them any, any additional protection. I think certainly in, in that sort of environment, the talk we're seeing today about... about you know, offering some form of private security um, assistance, if not the police themselves. I think that's something we're just going to have to look at now. Yeah, uh, the, uh, an issue of one person determined to attack an MP, well, th th that raises many questions about how on earth you're ever going to protect someone sufficiently. Uh, I know something that, that has concerned you is the visceral nature of politics, of, of our bipartisan approach to politics. Uh, and many people are saying we really need to look the word kindness has disappeared from the lexicon of politics and social media. And do we need to have a... I, mean, I remember saying all this after Joe Cox. I, mean, I remember her family saying, you know, let's concentrate on what unites us rather than what divides us. And, and yet we, we, still, we seem to be going further apart on that. No, I think that's right. I mean, I think, I think, we have to, I think we've got to distinguish two things. I think we, we need to wait for the police investigation before we draw conclusions about what specifically happened to, to David, David Amos. I mean, I think there's an element of we're all trying to be sort of amateur detectives and say that these factors contributed to the, to the attack. We've got, to, we've, we've got to wait. But I think you're absolutely right. In the wake of the, the killing of Joe, Joe Cox, there was a broader perception we had to step back and look at, look at you know, the, the nature of our, our discourse. And at that time, I remember, you know, because Labour MPs were saying to me about, about the sort of the nature of the discourse around, you know, the broader Brexit campaign and the threat from extreme right and politics on the right. And I think it was correct we did so. I, I also think now, you know, we have to be honest, this is, David Amos was a Conservative MP. It's a Conservative MP that's been, that's been killed. It's right that all MPs are under threat, but this is a Conservative MP who, 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 appeared, who has been murdered. And I do think we need to now look at what I, what I referred to as this sort of, this it's OK to hate the Tories narrative, and it's, it's OK to hate the Tories discourse which, 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 pervades, which pervades through our politics. Because one of the things that struck me with the very moving tributes um, to David that were given in the immediate aftermath uh, of his appalling death by his political opponents, we'll see that again today. But then in a week's time, mm. are we going to be back to a sort of discourse where it is acceptable to say, well, Tory MPs should, should face direct action, where obviously we've had the comments about Angela, from Angela Rainey, is it OK to say Tories are scum? You know, I think we need to have a broader discussion about that as well. After the, the murder of Joe Cox, there was this real push to say, OK, as Simon said, we focus on what unites rather than divides. Could we, the family have said, something good has to come from this. Could we see a shift in mentality where we say, let's actually focus on putting that into action? 
Well, I hope so. I mean, I, 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 you know, I, I have to be. I'm slightly cynical because obviously this is, you know, this, this is the second time we've, you, you know, we've experienced this in, in, in a very, very recent time. I, I, I hope so. You know, we have to be careful. You know, it's important that politics is robust. It's important that politics is is is, is passionate. People have deeply held differences and beliefs, and they should be free to articulate them. But as I said, that the, the nature of the discourse around our politics. And at the moment, I would like to see a focus, in particular, in, in, particular in, the, in the wake of the death, death of David Ames, on the focus that says it's all right, it, it, it's kind of, it's acceptable to hate Tories, it's acceptable to hate whoever's in government at a particular time, purely by dint of them being Tories or, or, or mm. being in government. And I think that's something we, you know, we need to look at, as well as obviously addressing you know, the broader issues and, and threats that face all politicians. Uh, he always brought cheer to the House because pretty much every time he spoke, he said, and by the way, Southend should be a city. As a tribute, and, and I'm sure it'll be raised today because the, the, in Commons they're having a two-hour discussion, paying tribute to him. It wouldn't be a bad idea to make Southend a city as a tribute, wouldn't it? No, I mean, I think that, I, I think that, would, be, I think that would be... I think that would be a good and fitting tribute. Um, but I think, and I've seen a lot of people saying that, but... But I also think it, 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 it's insufficient. You know, I mean, the reality is, what would, what would be the, the the best tribute to David is if David was still with us today, and sadly, and with his family, and he's not. So, I, by all means, let's do that. But mm. let's also not lose sight of the. Uh, the this the is a personal tragedy. Of what's well. happened, and it's yep. it's primarily a personal tragedy, as he said.